It's better defined as mobocracy. Okay. Mob rule. Well, I, really, with the Healy Coal Plant, what I see that at is a basic liberty issue. It's the free market liberty system. You have citizens, people, us, you and me, all of us here. We look around and we go, you know what? I have a need. Who can fill that need? We look around. The Healy Coal Plant, and this is just an example. They're, I mean, we're harping on them because they're there. It's something that we're all facing right now. We need cheaper electricity. Hey, the, this power plant's sitting here doing nothing. Let's get it on board. So the free market system says that the people that have a need go to the person that has the solution to that need, and they conspire together, if I can use that word, to get that need fulfilled. Free market liberty. That is the essence of liberty right there. Two people, several people, and another coming together without the government and making a need fulfilled. You know, that that whole issue of commerce, where does it come from? It, it doesn't come from government. Government cannot generate wealth. Government can only interfere with the, the generation and accumulation of wealth. Government can only get its money by forcibly taking through taxes what belongs to somebody else. Now, if you and I agree to a job, and whether it's you coming over to my house to do some dirt work or me sitting here in the, in, in the studio helping you run the show, we could use something like the federal green notes as an exchange system. Or we could use it as a simple exchange. Hey, you come do some dirt work at my house. I'll do the, the work at the radio station, just a barter for services. Or we could use apples or we could use ducks. Or, I mean, whatever it is that we want to use, we do not have to use dollars to do it. Right. However, what is legal tender in this, in this country? The only thing that they allow us to use is those those green pieces of paper. Federal Reserve notes. Oh, I just handed you a, a thing there. A, that was from yesterday's uh, Today in History. Back in 16, what was it? 52. 1652. 1652, an American did something in violation of English law. What did he do? He established the first mint. In America. And he started minting, I believe it was silver, right? He was a silversmith? Yes. He started minting silver. In other words, he started making coins out of silver for use as legal tender in the colonies. And, uh, well, it doesn't say what happened to him there, but I believe, if you look at historically, what ended up happening is that uh, this is how we ended up getting American silver to market. What would happen if the state of Alaska, which incidentally does have its own mint, started minting coins, whether it be gold coins, silver coins, even copper? I mean, we have uh, we have a number of other different metals that we could use here in Alaska just for use in Alaska. Just, you know, this will be now legal tender for the state of Alaska. Do you think people would use it? I would. I would, too. Absolutely. I, I would. Uh, interesting to see what would come. I mean... I know that Utah just passed the law where they they're going to start minting their own coins. So uh, again, out of gold and silver, yeah. I think that I think that people from around the world would clamor to get their hands on real money that is actually legal tender that is made out of something that has intrinsic value. Besides well, debt, they, exactly. Four five eight talk is the number we got on the next caller. Good morning. Who's this? This is Randy. Randy, what's on your mind? Well, uh, a few Mondays ago, I have inquired and asked of Aaron what he feels about the Age Discrimination in Employment Act, which was passed by the federal government back in 1967. Still not quite sure how you feel about it, Aaron, but I thought I'd maybe ask uh, Joshua to see if he has an opinion on it. Uh, the uh, Federal Age Discrimination in Employment Act prohibits private businesses from discriminating against workers that are 40 years or older in areas such as hiring, promotions, wages, and so forth. And uh, it applies actually only to companies that have 20 or more workers that are engaged in interstate commerce, which is like most companies that are of that size. There are some exceptions, like the law does allow you to uh, lay off airline pilots and bus drivers. And also you're allowed to, uh, to discriminate against older actors if you're trying to make a movie about a young guy. Then you can... Uh, discriminate against an older actor. Anyway, I'm just wondering, what do you think about this federal law that, in my opinion, encroaches upon the private sector? 
I think the federal government should be completely completely out of the free market system. Uh, if you have an older gentleman, nothing against old people. In fact, I have a gentleman right now that works for me, and I believe he's 79 years old. And he doesn't work for me because of the Age Discrimination Act. It's because he's a fantastic truck driver, has a lot of experience. He's always on time. He always does his job, and he can beat me in a foot race. And that is that is what it should be. The Age Discrimination Act, the what any I'm trying to think of Minimum Wage Act, all those they should be done away with, gone. Leave it up to the free market system. If you're 54 years old or 56 years old and you're better than the guy, the young punk that's trying to take your job, you'll stay there. But should you force an employer to hire someone or keep someone that isn't doing their job just because they are of a certain age? No. Get out of the free market system. And it's not just age. It goes for anything. Why should the government be requiring that you hire or keep anyone on the job for any reason? You shouldn't. Absolutely not. I mean, if they're not doing their job, you have when you hire someone, you're going into a private private contract with that person. You're saying, if you do this service for me, I will pay you such and such mm-hmm. amount of dollars. That's the end of it. No one should be a part of that. No one should be involved with that. If he doesn't keep up with his end, he's gone. If you don't keep up with your end, he'll leave. 458-TALK is the number. Good morning, caller. Who's this? You still there? All right. How about you? Good morning. Well, good morning. I'm Eugene. Hey, Eugene. Thanks for calling in. What's on your mind? I want to talk to you about that power plant down there. Uh, this was built many years ago. Uh, the problem with that power plant is it was a new design on paper. It worked very, very well. It was a, uh, a very high-efficiency plant. And what it did, it took coal and injected it into a... Uh, bed of molten lime. It made for a very high efficiency plant. They worked very well. The problem with it was because of the temperatures and the chemicals that were coming off the firing, uh, they had to use a special alloy uh, fireplace someplace in the system. And the chemicals continuously ate on the surface of that uh, alloy. Every 90 days, we had to shut the plant down, cool it off completely so people could get in there, take off this very expensive alloy plate, put in a new one, and test it, and then start it up and run it again, and it would last only 90 days. So after this process was gone through a few times, uh, the uh, company that was going to buy it, Golden Valley or whoever, said, it's too expensive, too much downtime. We cannot use this. Let us go back to the standard operating procedures, get rid of the uh, a bed of molten lime, uh, and do like the old plant was. Right. And the answer is we cannot do that. This was an experimental plant, and it must be run as it was designed. So it was never purchased by Golden Valley or whoever was going to buy it, and it just sits there. And we keep forgetting why the thing was shut down and what the deficiencies were. Well, it's still the EPA. Well, if you back up too, I mean, you said the old the old way that we produce power, you got the EPA saying, nope, you can't do that anymore, and cost us more money. Well, there are two power plants down there. The old one is still operating, <coughs> as I understand it. Am I correct? No, I think you are, Eugene. I think, but it is not as big as the new one that they had built. Yeah, right. but it's a different technology. They just put coal in the. Uh, the The problem was the the cost of downtime and repairing this uh, the plates that were being eaten away by the chemicals produced. All right, thanks for bringing that yeah, up. Yeah, thanks for calling because that's the first time I've ever heard that. And I mean, there you go. Let the free market decide it. If exactly keep the EPA out of it. If the free market says we can generate power with this plant, we have better technology or whatever to make this up and running, let them do it. If not, then let the free market decide, no, it costs too much, it's not efficient. All right, we're running out of time here. 458-TALK is a number. Good morning, caller. Who's this? Hi, it's Cecily. Hey, Cecily, what's on your mind? Oh, I just uh, um, realized that the government uh, has legalized all kinds of criminal 
activities. The main one is extortion, put you out of your home and if you don't pay the taxes. And I would say that if the government is run by criminals, then how is it that the people can uh, fight against, you know, crime, legalized crime? I'll hang up and listen. All right, Cecily, thanks. Appreciate that. I think uh, government is basically legalized theft. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, don't pay your taxes, you lose your home. Don't pay your taxes, you lose this, you lose this. I mean, yeah, they'll take whatever they want to take. So who are the criminals? I mean, where is the rule of law? Whatever they decide. Gentlemen, we are out of time. Thanks for being here. And a reminder, of course, that if you didn't get a chance to put your uh, point of view across today, you can always send us an email. That you can send it to me directly here at the station, Steve Floyd at KFAR660.com. We will see you next week for another edition of Patriots Lament right here on KFAR. We are a local talk radio. Coming up next, it's Health Talk on KFAR. <laughs>